Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at figures that don't exist. I'm going to be talking about my top nine action figure or action figure lines that were never produced. Nine because that's just the number I came across when I was finding it and I thought that was a good place to stop. This list is not really in any particular order because... How do you really grade figures that you can never really get your hands on? Although pretty much all these had prototypes produced. So starting off, number 9 is the Trendmasters Godzilla Doom Island line. Now this one is actually kind of produced. I think it might have gotten very limited release in some non-American countries. They go for crazy dollars on eBay. But it was really just a follow-up to Trendmasters Godzilla King of the Monsters and Godzilla Wars lines. It was introducing more kaiju in that same 10-inch scale and some of the smaller scales they did, and putting random armor and stuff on them, make them kids' toys. And on the whole, I really don't think it would have added a whole lot to the overall Godzilla figure line the Trendmasters did, but they were introducing some characters they hadn't previously done before in the other two lines, and it would have been kind of cool to see their take on some of the other characters. Number 8, NECA's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder. This figure's been seen in some pictures from NECA Studio Tour interviews that have been done, and it just looks awesome. A pure comic version of Shredder matching their comic versions of the turtles that had already been produced, along with, I think, April and Neil got produced. But it was a beautiful-looking figure. It had that great cartoony-style detail with the heavy black lines painted on the figure. One that I definitely would have liked to grab. Very cool looking figure. So sad that Playmates took back their right to do everything. And I do hope one day Playmates Ninja Turtles Classics line will mesh over and actually give us some of those comic style turtles. Number 7. The Hasbro Marvel Universe X-Men 3-Pack. Now I'm sure you've seen the Marvel Universe 3-Packs that... Toys R Us's and Walmarts and Targets everywhere. They were pretty cool packs of figures that Hasbro did for Marvel Universe. Basically putting a small team together and releasing them. And one of the ones they showed, I think last year at Comic-Con, was a X-Men team pack featuring Cyclops, Emma Frost, and Colossus with the Juggernaut powers, which I think was really cool. I really, particularly the Colossus, I would have bought the set for, because he was really nice looking. Plus a modern Cyclops is pretty good, and Emma Frost looked decent as well. And while Hasbro is notorious for hinting at figures and never releasing them, such as the Blade figure in Marvel Legends and a lot of Marvel Legends. I don't want to go into the Marvel Legends line. There's also supposed to be a Thor three-pack of figures that looks like it's never going to come out. And maybe we'll see them redone over in the Marvel Infinite series, but definitely is a pack I would have very much liked to see made available. Number six, the real Wave 3 for NECA's Prometheus line. We all know NECA released two series and a box set for Prometheus that I've reviewed here on my channel, and then there was a third last-ditch attempt to make some money off the line where they did holographic engineers in both the flight suit and not in the flight suit, and put in the little urns of ooze with them. But I never bothered picking those up. I never saw them at a store, and they weren't worth ordering online in my opinion. But the original Wave 3, or at least continuation, we were finally going to get Shaw, we were going to get Infected Five Fields, and we were going to get Infected Holloway. And the Severed David Head, which is actually the thing I want more than any of those figures. I just want the Severed David Head accessory. If that would have come with one of the holographic engineers, I would have been so down for that. No such luck. I know NECA says there's no way they're going back to it. Those figures are dead. But I would have really loved to have seen them. And it does make me curious, now that there is supposedly a Prometheus 2 in the works, would NECA even touch that license again? Number five, the Soda Toys Lost Line. Soda Toys produced a lot of obscure horror characters. I already reviewed their Machete Zombie from Land of the Dead, and they just hit all the properties that I guess were probably cheap at the time. Ones that people didn't pay as much mind to. They did characters like Dark Man and the Toxic Avenger and things like that. But Wave 4 looked like it was going to be a place where they were really going to hit their stride with getting some much-needed characters for horror fanatics, and it just never came to be. There are two pieces of this series that I was less interested in. There was 
an Anubis warrior, which I think was from one of the Mummy films or Scorpion King. Never saw the sequels to that. I just saw the original one, and, or the original remake, I guess I should say, and got pissed off that it wasn't Boris Karloff and didn't go back. <laughs> and then they were doing a box set from Tremors, which Tremors is another movie that I'm just not that into, so I probably would have passed on that one as well. But the other things they hit were pretty cool looking. They were going to do yet another killer clown from outer space. They already had done one that goes for big bucks in the secondary market. This was a much different build of one they were going to release. Obviously some clownish accessories to go with them. Killer Clowns all is cool. Would have been down for that. They were going to do a Herbert West from Reanimator, which looked really cool. He had his you know, white shirt on and the big syringe of glowing green liquid. That would have been a pretty cool action figure to have in a horror collection. I would have hoped he would have come with some cool reanimated accessories. Maybe he could have come with the dude's head, you know, the the head that uh, is looking for a date in the movie. Yeah, that would have been an interesting accessory to stick with it. It's a lot of cool options you could have done with Reanimator. They were going to do an American Werewolf in London. It looked like a two-pack. It was going to be both the guys, and I'm totally spacing on the characters' names right now. And the movie's sitting right there on my shelf, and I just don't want to bother reaching for it because I'm going to knock over all my stupid Funko figures on top of it. But you're actually going to get the wolf, and then you were going to get, dude, oh, I cannot think of his name, but dude all torn up and just ripped to shreds. Kind of one of the early times where he's not quite so zombie looking, but still pretty cool. The sculpt and the paint on this one, the prototypes I've seen, don't look as good as the other figures. They look a little cheaper, cartoonier. Assuming this was going to be a bigger figure, and I don't know. Maybe they were cutting costs already at the prototype phase, but that one looked like it could have been a little less impressive than some of the other offerings, but still Cool idea. I love American Werewolf figure. And last but not least on that series, they were going to do Leprechaun. He's going to have an alternate scarred up head. He's going to come with like the wishing well. I am not a huge Leprechaun fan, but I would have totally dug that one as well. Number four, NECA's Zombie Ed from Shaun of the Dead. This is another one of those figures that is on this list, but you can kind of still get it. This thing has shown up on eBay like crazy for basically what you'd expect to pay for a NECA fig. Coming out of China, they're obviously bootleg because they're not produced officially, but you can get a zombied up Ed from the end of Shaun of the Dead, and I think that's pretty cool. It would have been nicer if it was an official release, but it had probably better quality control. I've never seen one of these things in person, so I can only assume the Chinese knockoff bootleg might not be the best, but it would have been cool to have. Number three, and this is just kind of a big blob of NECA figures here, because we're going to do another figure from NECA, from Hellraiser, the Engineer. The Hellraiser line, they did three series total, with one deluxe figure coming at the end of Dr. Chenard. Series three was really hard to come by from what I saw. Series one and two, you could still find on eBay or Amazon at decent prices, as I proved when I bought the Butterball figure last year for very little money. But the Series 3 stuff, like the female and some of those last Cenobites, were very hard to come by. And basically it was because the lion was dying a horrible, horrible death. Much like the people in those movies and the careers of the people in those movies. But they are going to do the engineer, the big fleshy monster that hangs from the ceiling. And you only see briefly in the first movie, and I don't think he's in any of the sequels. And I don't think he was ever explored in any other bit of Hellraiser film at least. It probably wasn't the comics or something, but it looked really cool. I would have totally dug that as a deluxe figure that was released. I think now with the way that NECA is doing stuff with the deluxe figures like Ed 209 and the Spider Gremlin, it would have been something that we probably could have expected to see if there was enough interest the way they were doing things now, but back then the line was over. Number two, the NECA Samara figure from The Ring. This thing looked really freaking cool. Came with the well for it to crawl out of. Came with the TV for it to crawl out of. It's a simple figure to do. It's a little girl in a dirty dress and a lot of black hair. But it's an iconic horror image. And really, there's not that much in the way of J-horror figures that have ever really been produced. And I believe Randy at NECA has even said that's like the one figure that he really, really would have liked to have been able to get out to the public. And I don't blame him. The thing looks great. But on the plus side, this figure is actually being kind of done by SH Figuarts over at Bandai in Japan. They're doing their own super articulated version coming out fairly soon. So at least 
horror fans can get that character for the show, finally. And number one on my list, and as I said, the rest of this list wasn't in any particular order, but this last one is. This last one is the number one piece that I have stared at. I have a picture of it saved on my computer, and I just wish it existed. It is the Mezco Cinema of Fear, what I assume would be Wave 5. And there are two figures announced. One was Halloween 2 Hobo Michael Myers, and the other was Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3. And as I said, back when Mezco was doing the Cinema Fear line, I was a big Mezco fan. I liked them over NECA for their increased articulation. And I'm so bummed that neither of these guys were produced. Understandably, they're both from fairly crappy horror movies. But they're crappy horror movies that I have a soft spot for and very cool looking characters. Leatherface in Part 3 was about the most hardcore he'd ever looked, up to that point at least. And honestly, until the remakes came along, that was pretty much the most badass looking Leatherface. And I really dig that movie and I dig the giant saw that he has in that movie. And then The Hobo Myers, once again, Horrible movie, but I love that look. The look of Michael Myers with the extra jacket and the hood up and the hunting knife. It's just really cool looking. It's a great visual. And that, probably more than anything else in this list, I would love to have an action figure for. So as I said, that's just my personal list of figures I really wish had been produced that most of these probably would never ever see the light of day. But I know over the course of figures being produced for years and years and years now, there's been plenty that have been cut out, removed from lines, never released, or released at such low quantities that they basically never really were released officially. So what figures that were never made do you guys wish you could get your hands on? Do you have a holy grail that if they ever had the bootleg coming out of China, like the Shaun of the Dead Ed figure, that you would jump all over? Let me know in the comments below. Also, as always, check me out on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also check me out on Facebook, link below as always. And until next time, it's been with our Outside the Box Reviews. Stay tuned for more to come.